Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on forces in two dimensions. The topic of this video is the physics of inclined planes. And here's the two questions we wish to answer. How do you construct the free body diagram for an object moving along an inclined plane? And how do you analyze the forces of such an object? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Objects on inclined planes can be at rest, or they can be moving with a constant velocity down the incline, or they could be accelerating down the incline. Objects can even be moving at constant velocity or accelerating up the inclined plane if there's a force in that direction. The exact manner in which an object moves is dependent upon the forces that act upon the object, their relative magnitude and their direction. So we're going to be discussing the forces acting upon objects on inclined planes, and as we discuss each one, we'll put an arrow in this diagram to indicate the direction of that force. The first force we'll discuss is the force of gravity, which acts upon all objects on inclined planes or not, and always in the downward direction. Tilting the surface upward at an angle doesn't affect the direction of the force of gravity, it's always down. Now when you place an object on this surface, the surface and the object interact with one another. They press against each other and the result is a force on each object. As for the object up on the inclined plane, there's a normal force that acts perpendicular to the inclined plane, and it is in the direction as shown. Then there's the force of friction. The force of friction opposes the motion of the sliding object, so if it's moving down the inclined plane, the force of friction would be up the inclined plane and parallel to it, as shown in the diagram. Now finally, there can be a person pushing or pulling on the object, or even a string attached to the object that's pushing or pulling on the object, and it might even be pulling the object up the inclined plane. And in such situations as that, we would include a force directed up the inclined plane. If it's a rope pulling on the object, we'd call that force the force of tension. And you'll note as soon as that force begins to pull the object up the inclined plane, the friction force turns around and points down the inclined plane because friction always opposes the motion of an object. An object on an inclined plane accelerates down the incline and parallel to it. This acceleration is caused by the force of gravity. The problem is, if you look in the free body diagram, the force of gravity is not directed down and parallel to the inclined plane. So what we need to do is think in terms of the components or parts of the force of gravity that are directed in those directions. So I'm going to begin to think in terms of, instead of x, y axes, axes that have been tilted so that they're parallel and perpendicular to the inclined plane. Then I'm I'm going to take my force of gravity and inscribe it as the diagonal of a parallelogram as shown. And then I can draw the components or parts of the force of gravity, one of them parallel to the inclined plane and the other perpendicular to the inclined plane. Now you'll notice the angle theta on this diagram. It's the angle between the horizontal and the inclined plane. But it would make sense that it's also the angle between the perpendicular to the horizontal and the perpendicular to the inclined plane, as shown here on the diagram. Now if I think in terms of that, I now notice that the F perpendicular force is the side adjacent theta on a triangle that's made up of the perpendicular component, the parallel component, and the force of gravity. So if the perpendicular component is adjacent to the angle theta, it's the parallel component that's opposite of the angle theta. And it's because of this that we can relate these components to the value of the force of gravity using the sine and cosine function. We would end up with something that looks like this. F parallel is equal to F grav, or mg, times the sine of theta, and F perpendicular is equal to mg times the cosine of theta. The normal force is the support force that results from the interaction between an object and the plane that it rests upon. As these two objects press up against one another, they place forces on each other. The result is there's a normal force acting upon the object on the plane. Now in mathematics, normal means perpendicular to each other. And so, whenever we've had a normal force in physics, it's always been perpendicular to the surface the object's pressing upon. And most often, that's upwards because our surfaces are horizontal, like this diagram shows. So it may have bothered you that when we put an object on an inclined plane, that that normal force is no longer straight upwards. But now you know. Normal forces are always perpendicular to the surface that the object rests upon. So when we begin to tilt the plane, we begin to also tilt the normal force, but the rule is always perpendicular to the plane. Now the normal force is the one force that is perpendicular to the plane that is capable of balancing the perpendicular component of gravity. And as a result, we most often notice that the normal force is equal to the F perpendicular, which is equal to mg cosine of theta. That equation is something to store in your noodle. 
The simplest inclined plane scenario is an object accelerating down in a friction-free incline. When we begin to think of the forces acting on the object, we would draw gravity straight down in normal force perpendicular to the incline, and that's all. But gravity is the, is the problematic force here because it's neither parallel nor perpendicular to the acceleration. So we take that force and we resolve it into its two components. And once we do, we forget about gravity. It's been taken care of. Now we have three forces, or at least one force, in two components of a force. And what you notice is that perpendicular to the plane, there's no acceleration, so the forces would balance. We could say that F norm equal F perpendicular. And parallel to the plane, there is an acceleration, so we expect an unbalanced force, and that unbalanced force is the parallel component of gravity. So in this situation, F net is equal to F parallel, which is mg sine of theta. And the acceleration is F net divided by m, and if I substitute mg sine theta, for F net, I'll notice the m's cancel and the acceleration becomes g times the sine of theta. When friction is involved, we carry out a similar analysis, except we have to remember that F fric equal mu F norm. It begins with a free body diagram, so I draw the forces. There's F grab, and then there's F normal perpendicular to the plane, and then F friction opposing the motion and going up the inclined plane. Now I gotta take gravity and resolve it into its parts, so I have the parallel component and I have the perpendicular component. And once I get that, I forget about gravity, and then I think in terms of the perpendicular to the plane forces. They will balance each other since there's no acceleration perpendicular to the plane. And so F normal equal the perpendicular component of gravity, which is mg cosine theta. Now parallel to the plane, there's some acceleration. So I have to think that F net is now equal to F parallel minus F friction. And F friction is mu times F norm. Now, if you look at the perpendicular situation, F norm is mg cosine theta. So friction is mu mg cosine theta, and parallel is mg sine theta. So the net force is mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta. Take that expression for net force and put it into the equation, the Newton's second law equation, for F net. Cancel your m's and you end up with a is equal to mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta. Now it's time for some numbers. I have a little trick I like to use. It's a way of looking at the problem differently. It's a way of giving it a different twist. Here's the free body diagram for the problem that we just saw with the three forces acting on it. And you'll remember, we take the gravity force and we break it up into its components. Now this is pretty good and a lot simpler than it was in the first diagram, but it's still not as good as it could be. I employ a trick that I call the tilted page trick or the tilted head trick. You could just tilt your head something like this and look at the diagram. And what you notice is now all the forces are vertical and horizontal with that tilted head. But that little tilted head trick gives you kind of a taco neck syndrome, you know, when you're eating a taco. Not real good. So a better way of doing it is to take the page and to tilt the page. And when you do that, you end up getting a diagram that looks like this, with all the forces going up, down, left, right. This now no longer looks like an inclined plane problem. When you tilt the page and you get this diagram, it looks more like a usual Newton's second law problem in one dimension. Now for the numbers. Here we have a 3.45 kilogram object on an incline, inclined at 28.3 degrees, and it's friction free. The free body diagram is shown and I have to fill in all the blanks. I'm gonna begin with the one that's given, the mass of the object, it's 3.45 kilograms. Then I'm gonna calculate F grab. Remember your formula, M times G, where G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now whenever I have an inclined plane problem, I always take the F grab and resolve it into the parts. Remember the formula. F parallel is mg sine theta. So I take my theta, 28.3 degrees, I'm going to use my calculator, and I get F parallel, 16.0 newtons. Now if you look parallel to the plane, there's only one force. It's this parallel component of gravity. So that's the net force. I'm going to fill that in next, 16.0 newtons. And now I can calculate acceleration using Newton's second law. F net, 16.0 newtons, divided by the 3.45 kilograms. I now have my acceleration. Two more blanks. F perpendicular, that's the perpendicular component of gravity, it's mg cosine of theta. And the normal force balances that, and so now we have all our blanks. Now let's do the same problem, but factor in the friction. It's the same mass, the same angle theta, but a coefficient of friction of 0.371, that's the mu value. So I begin the same way. 
I write down the mass, and then I use it to calculate the F grab as mass times 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Then I de deal with the components. For F parallel, it's mg sine theta. So I do my math. It's the same as before, 16.0 newtons. And I do mg cosine theta. Now I really need to get this F perpendicular so that I can get the F normal. They balance each other. So there's your F normal. I need that F normal because friction is mu, 0.371, times F normal. So I multiply and I get the value for the friction force, 11.0 newtons. Now there's two forces in parallel to the plane. There's 16.0 newtons and there's 11.0 newtons. If you subtract the smaller from the larger, you get 5.0 newtons down the incline. That's the F net. Then divide by 3.45 kilograms to get the acceleration. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website. We have links to each one of them in the description section of this video. We have two concept builders, two Minds on Physics missions, and a tutorial page. Any one of these activities would be good next steps for making the learning stick. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.